please welcome to the stage your conference chairs, Regan Mandrake and Mark Hancock. Hello, welcome to CHI 2018. I'm Regan Mandrake from the University of Saskatchewan. And I'm Mark Hancock from the University of Waterloo. And the theme of this year's CHI is Engage. We'd like to start by acknowledging that the Palais de Congrès is located on unceded indigenous lands. Jogjauge, um, commonly known to you as Montreal, is a historic gathering place for many First Nations. We invite you to engage with other attendees, your CHI 2018 community. So who are you? As of Saturday, we have 3,346 attendees from 58 countries. 45% of you are first-time attendees. So this year, we introduced the My First Time, or My First Kai ribbon. So if you see anyone wearing one, please say hello. 19% of you are from industry or government, but the majority of us are academics. There are so many exciting things to see at Kai 2018, and although we can't highlight, oh, you have to, sorry, you have to go one up. Good, okay. We can't highlight them all. We do want to show you a few of the highlights. 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of Doug Engelbart's Mother of All Demos. We are celebrating this tonight at the conference reception and CHI 2018 Expo featuring demonstrations. From 6 to 9 p.m. tonight, you can engage with 77 demonstrations, but they are only here tonight, so make sure you go see them. And there will also be poutine. Oh, I'm looking forward to that poutine. <laughs> This weekend we had a game jam and a science jam, and you can see what these students produced during the coffee breaks on Tuesday. And on Wednesday night, head to Lasat to experience part of the CHI 2018 art exhibition in the giant projected dome. Will there be poutine there? Well, I think this food's gonna be a little bit fancier there, but there will be drink tickets available at the door. There's a lot going on in the exhibit hall this week. In addition to our commercial booths, we have zones where you can play, work, meet, chill, take selfies with our CHI letters right here and write on our graffiti wall about what is inspiring you at CHI. We also have a plenary session for every day. Tomorrow, choir, choir, choir is here, and Wednesday afternoon is the video showcase. Will there be poutine? There won't be poutine, but there will be popcorn. And on Tuesday, we have Sue Gardner giving the closing keynote about how the internet broke democracy and what it is that we can do to fix it. At CHI 2018, we invite you to engage with a spirit of inclusion. We're off again. Continuing the efforts of previous chairs, we provide gender-neutral bathrooms marked on your map. And for the first time at CHI, we have badge pronouns. We're just waiting for the slides to catch up. All right, we're also making it easier for families and caregivers to attend CHI with subsidized on-site child care and a nursing room on the fourth floor that parents can use to soothe babies who are attending their very first CHI. And we know that some grown-ups can sometimes need a break from it all too, especially with 23 simultaneous tracks of stuff going on. So we, this year we have a desensitization room if you just feel like you need to go somewhere quiet and get a little bit of a break from it all. Also for the first time this year, we have standing areas at the back of every paper session room. So if sitting for four days, <laughs> yeah, if sitting for four days straight is not your thing, we have options for you. We are making it easier for people to attend remotely. Continuing in the tradition of previous years, we have the beams again. So if you see people inhabiting robots around the venue, please engage with them. And for the first time, we are live streaming every single paper session. So your friends and families and lab mates back home can watch you give your talk. A lot of these initiatives are supported. <laughs> yeah, go, go for sure. it. First time. <laughs> a lot of these initiatives are supported by our generous sponsors, whom we would like to thank. So special thanks to our champion sponsors, Alibaba Group. Bloomberg. Facebook. Google. IBM Research. Microsoft. Oh. And thanks to our contributing sponsors, Disney Research, National Science Foundation, Salesforce, and Lasat. And of course, to our friends of Kai, Adobe Systems. 
We also really want to thank our parents. Both the ACM and SIG Chi have been really extraordinary in their support of Chi 2018, and we're so very grateful to them. So with that, we'd like to take this opportunity to welcome to the stage the president of the ACM and a member of our own SIG Chi community, Vicki Hansen. Hello everyone, it's really great once again to see so many of you out there. As Regan just said, um, I am an HCI researcher myself and when I was up here last year standing here in front of you, I mentioned that I am the first member from the Sig Chi community to be the ACM president. Thank you. Anyway, so it's a special pleasure to be here talking to you today. I've been asked to take just a few minutes to let you know about ACM, which is the world's oldest and largest computing society for researchers and practitioners. Globally, ACM reaches nearly three million professionals and students in computing and related fields through our technical, scientific, and education activities. Although headquartered in New York City, ACM now has a majority of members from outside of the United States. Two of our most visible research activities are our conferences and our publications. Every year, ACM sponsors more than 170 conferences around the world, and CHI is one of the most prestigious and successful of these conferences. Yes, give yourselves a hand. <laughs> ACM prides itself on top quality publications which include conference proceedings, journals, and magazines on a hugely diverse range of computing topics. This publication's work is led by the PUBS board co-chairs, Joe Constan, part of the CHI community. He's sitting somewhere out in the audience here. Oh, Joe, yay. Thanks, Joe. And the other co-chair, Jack Davidson, who just happens to be one of the candidates currently running to succeed me as ACM president. <laughs> hey, Jack. ACM is a volunteer-driven society, and people such as Joe and Jack, and others you see on stage representing CHI, SIG CHI, ACM, including me, among many others, all contribute significant volunteer time to make ACM activities successful. I also want to give a shout out to one of the new initiatives that I started this year, the ACM Future of Computing Academy, which has several members from within the Sig Chi community. This academy was created to support the next generation of computing professionals, giving them an influential voice and challenging issues facing ACM, computing, and society. So one of the real joys of being ACM president for the past couple of years has been getting to talk with all of you at, th at this event. So this is my last time getting to do that. So I was trying to figure out what might be meaningful to say in the little bit of time that I have left. One thing that's always stood out for me with respect to SIG CHI and its conferences is concern for social issues. Last year when I was here, I talked about how ACM, as an organization for exchange of scientific ideas, has an open conference policy and is committed to the prohibition of discrimination of any kind at our conferences. ACM continues to strive for policies that reflect global thinking, equality, and social responsibility. I know that CHI and SIG CHI leaders, as well as many other groups within ACM, work hard not only to adopt best practices for full inclusion, but to be leaders in these areas. So in leaving, let me just encourage all of you who are ACM professional members to vote in the ACM general election that is currently underway. If you didn't get your PIN and voting instructions in email last week, you can go to the ABCM website to find out about how to contact the election company to get this voting information. And now it's my pleasure to introduce 
the SIGCOD president, Lauren Trevine. Good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure to say a few words of welcome on behalf of SIGCHI. And I, I was trying to do some math based on what Mark and Regan said, and it seems like maybe 1,500 people here have never been to CHI before. So I think it's worthwhile saying a few words about what CHI or what SIGCHI actually is. So as Vicki said, SIGCHI is ACM's special interest group on computer human interaction. You can find out more about us by going to our website, sigchi.org, or following us on social media. People are actively tweeting here, for example. Um, and a bunch of us on the executive committee have these nice purple ribbons on. So if you see any of us here, we'd love to talk with you and just get to know more people and understand our community better and share and learn from everyone who's here. So again, you might be wondering, what does SIGCHI actually do as this parent organization of a conference like CHI? Well, there's a phrase I like to use. We support, empower, and grow the global HCI community. And I'd like to take a few minutes just to tell you what we mean by that. Now, the most prominent thing that we do is we sponsor 24 annual and biennial conferences happening around the world. And last year, over 9,000 participants took part in these conferences. You can see what's going on or what the upcoming conferences are by going to sigchi.org slash conferences, upcoming conferences. And this map shows the location of many of the conferences that have happened in the recent past and that are coming up in the near future. Uh, you can see North America and Europe are heavily represented, but we're also moving into areas uh, that are sort of newer for SIGCHI, much more in Asia, and we're moving to some other parts of the world as well. And I'll talk more about that in just a minute or so. Now, some of you may have noticed these banners that are outside this hall and around, around the area here. Uh, each of our sponsored conferences has the opportunity to make a nice banner that describes what they do. I encourage you to check them out and find out a little bit because your interest may also be served by participating in some of these other conferences as well. Now, how else does SIGCHI support the global HCI community? I want to tell you about a few of the things we've done recently and are still doing that I'm quite excited about. So the first thing is that we provide lots of support for all of the conferences we sponsor to innovate and to grow. We also have been specifically supporting students through, uh, to participate in conferences through uh, several funding initiatives, the Gary Marsden Fund and the Student Travel Grants. We have been funding diversity, internationalization and inclusion events to make sure that we grow the community and continue to expand and cover all sorts of perspectives. We have been uh, funding some across borders events at the last few CHI conferences where we have enabled people to come from uh, countries and communities that have typically not been able to participate in CHI to enrich the experience of everyone here. And conversely, we've also been uh, holding some events lately in parts of the world where we have not had such a large presence like Egypt and Guatemala to try to understand these communities and again integrate people around the world into one community of learning and mutual knowledge. We also support the development of software to support what we do in our conferences from submitting papers, reviewing papers, scheduling this very complicated event as well as helping to navigate around this event. So many of us have downloaded and are using the SIGCHI conference app that lets us see what's going on and make our own personalized schedules. And then one other thing I wanted to mention briefly is we have local SIGCHI chapters around the world. And I'm very pleased when I look at this map here, I'm very pleased to say that in the last three years, the term of this executive committee, we have nine new chapters in Asia, which has been a focus for us, as well as 12 chapters in the greater global south. So we really are, uh, we really are expanding um, our global coverage of SIGCHI. 
Now, if you want to learn more about SIGCHI and about how we support the HCI community, there's a couple opportunities for you here at the CHI conference. Uh, the next session, later this morning, members of the SIGCHI Executive Committee will be leading a course on how to become a SIGCHI volunteer. That's in room 524B. And then Wednesday over lunch, there will be a joint SIGCHI and CHI conference town hall. And that's in room 520. And there is a first come, first serve lunch for the first few hundred people who show up. So how can you refuse that, right? Now, at this point, I'd like to do something that's always a great pleasure. Uh, and I want to mention the distinguished members of our community who have been recognized with awards by SIGCHI this year. And I'd like to ask you to please hold your applause till I've announced all the award recipients. First, Lifetime Achievement in Research, Stephen Feiner. Lifetime Achievement in Practice, Arnie Lund. Social Impact, Lori Faith Craner. This year we have a new award, Outstanding Dissertation. There are two recipients this year, Stephanie Mueller and Blazer. Lifetime Service, two recipients this year as well, John Thomas and Maria Francesca Costabile. We have eight new members of the SIGCHI Academy, Amy Bruckman, Sheila Carpendale, Ed Chi, Michael Muller, Albrecht Schmidt, Jean Schultz, Andy Wilson, and Volker Wolf. And please join me in congratulating all of our award recipients. <laughs> now, before I turn it over to uh, back over to Mark and Reagan, there is one more thing I wanted to leave you with. Uh, like ACM, SIGCHI itself is having an election coming up very soon. So please uh, join me in helping to renew SIGCHI as we vote in a new executive committee. Uh, the elections happen from April 30th to June 8th. That's the voting period. And you soon will be receiving email uh, if you are a SIGCHI member with instructions for how to vote. So I encourage everybody to participate in that. So thank you and enjoy CHI 2018. Thanks, Lauren. We also want to thank the over 100 people who volunteered on our organizing committee. You're all rock stars. We're so appreciative, and not just because of your kazoo performance that you gave in Denver, um, but because you did so much work over the year to help us organize this conference. And a special shout out goes oh, yeah. to. Yeah, oh. I was going to say, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> And a special shout out goes to our assistants to the general chairs, Max Burke and Kaylee MacArthur, who behind the scenes have been so, doing so much more than just assisting. But we have guided, they have guided a lot of the initiatives that you will see this week. Now, it's our great pleasure to introduce two people with whom we've spent a lot of time over the last two years, our partners in crime, and your CHI 2018 technical program chairs, Anna Cox and Mark Perry. Okay, so we want to tell you two things really about uh, the program today. So right now we're going to talk about who built the technical program and what does the technical program consist of. So the gargantuan effect, uh, the, the effort of soliciting, submitting and assessing submissions at CHI, we are hugely relieved to tell you, is over for the 2018 program. But how did this work? Our first task was to construct the organizing committee. And we've been working hard to encourage diversity, and we wanted to build an inclusive committee. We therefore asked for volunteers, and we had a fantastic response. And the committee consists of people from academia, and from industry, and from all across parts of the world. And we made a real conscious effort to balance gender and ethnicity. And we want to pay special thanks here to the extremely uh, hard work of, or extremely hard work of the 47 people who took responsibility for a major part of the, the, the program. These are the program-making committee members. 
On that, on the, uh, as part of this, I'd like to pay a special thanks to our assistants, Frederick Broody from UCL and Mar Marta Cetinato from the University of North Northumbria, who've been absolutely amazing. Frederick and Marta will have touched every single one of the people involved in the program in some way. And as you can see, this, and you will see, this is an incredible effort. So, could everyone on the conference organi or organizing committee, whether you organize one of the tracks or were part of the logistics team, please stand up. Show us who you are. Else. Stay standing up, please. Now, this, uh, the technical program committee are just a subset of the organizing committee, and all 100 of the, the organizing committees joined our Slack workspace, and they're pretty chatty lot, as well, as you can see. Now, we're not especially competitive, but this is kind of, this level of uh, communication is indicative of the colossal level of organization that's gone into the uh, process. Now, we move on to some other tracks, such as the, the papers and late-breaking work, which require huge teams of people. And these are the associate chairs and the subcommittee chairs who manage all the reviewing. These people are part of the program committee. And we want to thank a rather larger number, all 489 of them, for the part they played in this process. So could everyone involved in the program committee work please stand up? This will be <laughs> ACs and SCs. So let's normalize this into a shape I can actually use. Um, the sheer number of people organizing uh, in the organizing and program committee pales, in, pales uh, compared to the sheer number of people who are involved in the conference as individual reviewers, you can see here. The program committee recruited 3,839 reviewers. So if you reviewed for CHI 2018, could you please stand up now? Not many people left sitting down. So thank you very much. And that illustrates, let's sit down. Let's illustrate what a truly community effort this conference actually is. Now, last slide on their numbers. Um, please don't stand, everybody, everyone. Um, and the, of course, we can't forget the 3,827 unique authors and content creators. And that doesn't even include the workshop authors, without whom there would be no conference at all. So thank you very much to everyone. Okay, so I want to tell you a little bit about the shape of the technical program. It has great scale and diversity. Um, the papers are the largest track. It makes up about 55% of the technical program. The late breaking work is the second largest at 21%. And then we have demonstrations and workshops, courses, the student research competition, case studies, the Doctoral Consortium, Six, Alt Chi, the Video Showcase, Art, the Student Design Competition, and Panel Discussions. Over the weekend, we already got started. We had workshops and symposia. We had the Game and Science Jams, and also the Doctoral Consortium. Over the coming four days, you have the opportunity to sample some of the 198 sessions and as many as that are have, uh, running concurrently across 23 parallel sessions. You'll also have the opportunity to engage with thousands of smart, cool people that are here today. Now, across all of the tracks, we really had a record year for submissions. And this graph shows you the number of accepted papers year on year as the conference has grown. And you can see that we had the largest number of accepted papers ever with 666. We have, uh, uh, you'll be able to identify the best of those papers um, by looking for these icons through your program where we've indicated the uh, best papers and also the honorable mentions. Now, one of the things that we tried to do was to give you a bit of insight into how the program is built and how changes we might have made this year have impacted acceptance rates or the number of submissions. 
So we've written two blog posts, which you can find at these URLs. One shows you uh, an overview of scores and acceptance rates on the papers track, and the other covers all of the track, um, all of the different tracks, and tries to give you the big picture. Uh, we made a significant change, I think, to the papers track this year by having no more notes. So there are no more four-page papers. Um, we did some analysis of what impact that had, and you can find that at this URL also. So now I just want to hand you back to Regan and Mark. That is a lot of content. So if you find it overwhelming to navigate these 23 simultaneous tracks, we have several tools available that you can access from our website. We have an interactive web program, and there's a PDF of the print program that you also have in your bag. New this year, we have the SIGCHI mobile app, available on both iOS and Android. And, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. and as usual, we have Confer, uh, a tool that allows you to create a customized program and network with others who have similar interests. You can also download a zip of the entire proceedings, either from a USB stick at registration or online under the proceedings link. And the live streams of each session can be viewed by following the live streaming link. If you navigate on our web program, you can also access the papers in the digital library by clicking on the ACM icon beside each paper. Video previews are also available there. And each session has a live stream link that takes you directly to that session's stream. All of this is available on our website, which has other useful information, such as things to do in Montreal, which is curated by our local chairs. And this year, we also introduced the conference at a glance insert, which you'll find in your bag, which is also a easy, little easier to fit in your pocket than our full print program. And of course, you can ask a, for help from any SV, who are very recognizable in their amazing pink shirts. <laughs> 